Hello and welcome guys. Thank you for joining me once again for uh, my Facebook Live. Tonight we're talking about preparing for the unexpected. So we know that even in the midst of all the pandemic and crisis that is going on all throughout the United States and even the world that life continues to happen. It doesn't stop. So on top of all of that, Sometimes we can be bombarded by even more tragedies, traumas, and unexpected situations. So that is what we're going to talk about tonight. Mention some of these things that could occur and ways that we can prepare uh, for these things in the event that they come knocking at our door. And uh, tonight, I'm, in my mind, I'm really focused on uh, the older adult population. But this is information that we can all use, especially those of us that have uh, families that we're still raising. Uh, there may be some things in here that uh, you may want to uh, consider setting in place for your family now. So uh, I am glad that you're here with me tonight. And uh, as you log on, please go ahead and like and share this video. I'll try not to hold you long tonight, guys. Uh, just want uh, you guys to uh, continue to be educated, empowered, and encouraged through the time of crisis. So when I talk about uh, the unexpected, some of the things that I'm talking about are those unexpected illnesses that can occur because outside of the corona, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going around the world, we still have those illnesses such as uh, heart disease, cancers, uh, still with uh, diabetes and, and uh, kidney disease, just all kind of illnesses that we still deal with that we can allow being so focused on one thing cause us to neglect the other things that were already happening in our life. So another thing is uh, unexpected accidents. We know that accidents do happen and we know that not everybody is um, obeying the mandate or the request for you to stay home and stay safe. There are still people out in the uh, communities, they're out on the highways, and they're still traveling. So they've neglected to adhere to the mandate or to the re requirements of uh, the community or the law or the government, and they're still taking those risks. I know that I got out and went to the grocery store on yesterday and just in a matter of um, minutes, I could see the potential for several accidents. And it's just that um, with everything that's going on, I think we're just a little um, less focused on what we're doing and our minds are so uh, blown away by the changes that has happened so suddenly. And uh, we're not as uh, focused or alert to uh, the tasks that we have on hand. So everybody's trying to uh, get somewhere and get somewhere fast and we're not paying attention to uh, really what's going on or what we should be going on to avoid accidents of such. Then there is uh, the unexpected deaths that are still occurring. 
And guys, these are deaths from uh, infant babies all the way up to elder people. Death has no uh, age. It has no uh, residence or has no uh, person that it can't come, uh, won't come visit you, if you understand what I'm saying. Death can show up anywhere. We don't know where death is. All we know is that there are some things that we can prepare in the event that it does come. And um, we hope that not for any of our loved ones or family and friends, but we know life cycle and we understand life cycle. And just as sure as we take one breath, we know that the next breath can be our last. And that's just the reality of life. And another unexpected event that I'm thinking of tonight is the loss of income. You know, some of them, some of us have been fortunate uh, to still be promised an income through this uh, situation, this pandemic. But uh, what happens if that's changed? What can we do to uh, make it or prepare? in the event that um, that does happen. And so um, this is what we're talking about tonight. And for us older ones, especially if we're uh, single, if the kids are grown and out on their own, and it, it it's you that you have an offend for, or you and a spouse who is also aging. Uh, and then what if you are uh, aging and you still have young kids that you have to uh, tend to and supply needs for. These are all unexpected events, but there are things that we can do to prepare. Some of the things um, I, or ideas I want to give you uh, may seem uh, redundant, but they are necessary, guys. And so one of the things I want to tell you uh, when preparing is to make sure that you include prayer. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is necessary because, like I've mentioned so many times before, it keeps you connected to your spiritual creator, whoever that is for you. You need to be connected to a power or a source that is higher than yourself. Now, prayer and uh, the shape or the uh, relationship of your prayer life, uh, that's not for anybody else to decide. That is an individual uh, perception and you gauge it as it works for you. So however you pray, there's no uh, magic formula for it. Just make sure that as you are preparing for unexpected things to happen, that this is one of the things that you use in preparation is prayer. Because the force behind uh, the things that we deal with are greater than us as human. So there is higher uh, spiritual things behind the things that are coming up on us and those which are to come. So way to pre prepare is to be sure you include prayer in the formula. Another way you can prepare is to make sure that you follow all the regulations and laws that have been put in place. Now, the regulations and laws that have been put in place are for your protection. And I was just thinking uh, yesterday as I was going through the grocery store and uh, getting uh, the mid to last month supplies for our household, I can't recall the number of sarcastic remarks or comments or questions that were just thrown out um, from people's mouths uh, while doing the shopping. 
And a lot of it was, uh, uh, I, I think uh, to me, I just thought it kind of foolish. You know, we, we never know who foolish people are until they open their mouths. And for anyone to think that what we're dealing with is something to be taken lightly, then I would suggest you go back and rethink it or go back and pray and, and until you get answers from uh, your spiritual creator because I do not believe that this is a laughing matter. I believe that this is a serious thing that we face. And I also believe that it is something not to be taken lightly. So whatever your state, whatever your community, whatever your uh, town, your city, whatever, whatever has been mandated or has been suggested for you to do, in order for you to prepare and to stay prepared and to say, stay as safe as you can during this time, it is necessary that you follow the regulations and the laws that have been set uh, before you. Okay, then um, I know that we have to get out and do our uh, routine shopping and uh, all, all that's necessary to pay bills. Another thing that I'm telling you is to do only the things that are necessary. Do only the things that are necessary. Um, some bills may not be necessary for you to leave the house and have to be out uh, for hours at a time. And I think that a lot of us are doing uh, unnecessary things as a way of uh, getting out the house or maybe we're uh, bored as I've heard some of them say or whatever the situation. Guys, there are things set online uh, that are there to help you. There are phone numbers that are set in place to help you. The people that want your money or that out, that's after your money, the utility companies, the phone uh, companies, and all those things that are important to you, they're adjusting to the changes that are necessary during this time. So they have phones, uh, numbers that you can call so that you don't have to uh, be out and be exposed unnecessarily. So that's one of the things you also want to look at. Uh, check their websites. Check those paper bills that are coming in. There are numbers that you can call to make arrangements for payments or to put in the mail, whatever, anything to help reduce the exposure that you are being exposed outside of the home. Also, it's necessary that you prepare by having the appropriate insurances in place. By having the appropriate insurances in place. And this is why I wanted um, to give this information tonight, especially for the aging populations. Because there are some things that uh, you may not have in uh, place. And I just given you suggestions something you may want to check in or or maybe you don't but for whatever the case um i'm gonna just share it with you tonight um now those of you who know me know that the beginning of the year before this pandemic uh, started i lost my dad and losing him put a lot of things in perspective for me because uh, he wasn't someone that was sick uh, all the time and in and out of the hospital and things like that. As far as we knew, he was a healthy man. And the only issue that uh, we ever known was that he had uh, high blood pressure and he took medication every day for uh, blood pressure. But we found out two months before he died that he was diagnosed with cancer. 
and the cancer was so advanced that there was nothing that uh, could be done to treat the cancer. So what I'm saying is, um, dad, all he had in place was a life insurance policy, a life insurance policy. And yes, by all means, if you don't have a policy in place, please make sure that as we're going through this time that you're reaching out to an agent and you're getting some answers for a policy that works for you. Now, for those that don't have kids or you don't have a spouse, you still need uh, life insurance, especially if you're uh, struggling day to day with debt and uh, a lack of income. If you live in poverty, you need some way that in the event that something happens to you, that uh, your things left here can be taken care of. Now, what a life insurance policy does is that it's set there. It doesn't have to be a great big policy, but what it does is allows your family to bury you and um, take care of the things that needs to be taken care of uh, for the time that you were here, that maybe you left. So that's that's what that life insurance does. And, and for someone who say, well, I don't have kids or something, uh, your beneficiaries can be somebody you trust beneficiaries, just somebody you trust and that you can have a conversation with to make sure that in the event that you leave this earth, that you're taken care of. Your business is tended to so that if you have family or if you have kids, that weight does not fall totally on your uh, kids or your family. So that's preparation, guys, because remember, these things are unexpected and we don't know where they are. We don't know when they'll show up at our door. So this is just preparation grounds. So being sure that you have life insurance in place, it's necessary. Another thing that you want to have in place, if you are a homeowner, to make sure that you have homeowner's insurance. Homeowner insurance is necessary. It is necessary. And I know that a lot of us who own homes, this is something that we don't invest in. But guys, we invest in everything else. We invest in uh, feeding our addictions and habits. We invest in fast foods and uh our medications, things that are killing us and, and, and bringing us down every day that's not healthy for us. So why not invest in something that you value? If you have a home, it's something of value to you. So this is something that we need to have in place because we don't know what's going to happen but we want to be prepared in the event that it does okay so life insurance homeowners insurance it's necessary okay so check into that that's something that you can health insurance health insurance is another thing that's important and i know that there are some people that they say well uh their health is too bad and maybe they can't be insured or something of that nature. Well, there are also supplemental uh, programs now that if you can't get a good health insurance coverage, if you're somebody, if you're a teenager, if you have kids that are not insured, uh, there is something called care credit, care credit. And what that does is it acts like a credit card but for health reasons, you know, and there are many facilities and uh, hospitals and uh, clinics and things that will accept this as a form of payment. And so what care credit does is it pays the bill up front and then you make uh, monthly payments 
to care credit every month until you get that bill taken care of. So that health insurance will allow you uh, to have just a little more options a little more options during this time because we never know what's going to happen. So um, we have life insurance, homeowners insurance, health insurance, and also guys for you aging individuals that is hitting 60 plus. One thing you need to check into is long-term uh, disability insurance or long-term care uh, insurance because uh, the first month that we found out that dad was sick and he was sick to the extent that was gonna eventually end in death, having this long-term disability uh, insurance in place would have been another uh, resource that we could have had to have in place so that he wouldn't be worried about having to go to work. He would not have been worried about um, where the next month of income was going to come because he was self-employed. So if he didn't work, he didn't have an income coming in. But long-term uh, disability or long-term care uh, insurance would have kicked in at this point to where he would have still had resources, uh, financial resources coming in. So then that eliminates a lot of the stress, right? Not only for the person dealing in, with the illness, but also for the families trying to care for uh, the loved ones uh, that's facing illnesses. And um, so this is something that you can look into and you look into it now before you need it so that in the event that you uh, get sick or have to go to a nursing home or whatever the situation that comes up, that you already have a plan in place because we are aging every day we get up and lay down and get up again we are aging and a lot of times these bodies are wearing down and down and down so we don't know what shape we're going to be in from one day to the next it's all about just being prepared so these are things that we have to think about. And yes, it's going to cost you a little money month to month to month. But if you do the budgets and things like that, that I've talked about in earlier videos, you can find the resources to set some of these things in place, right? It's all about deciding what's necessary. And I can tell you, if you're sitting at home watching cable five or six hours a day, there's your money right there that you can put these things in place, right? Because these things are helpful and necessary and cable not so much. It's just a thought. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. I just have to show you that these things can be put in place. It, the process works if you work it, okay? Now, those are insurances that I talked about. There were four of them that is necessary. Auto insurance, it, it, it's necessary because like I said, I was out and about just uh, not long yesterday shopping and I saw so many uh, potential accidents that could happen. And it's just because uh, people's, I don't know where people's mind was. I, I sit and I, I wondered, you know, you know what, what's going on? But I know in the midst of everything that is going on and still having to, uh, take care of the household and pay the bills and stuff, I know that our minds are distracted, guys. And so 
you have to make sure that these things are in place so that uh, you're protected. So you invest a little bit in these things now <coughs> so that you won't have a huge debt over your head later in the event that the unexpected happens. All right. Now, my dad, when he passed away, he had uh, life insurance. I mentioned that. But he didn't have a will in place. Well, my dad has seven children, seven biological ch children. So there's seven of us, no will in place. He owned property. He owned a, a business. He owned uh, assets. So with no will in place, then there's... Um, now we have to get the law and the courts involved in a price process to take care of uh, his property and the things that uh, need to be tended to as far as his estate is concerned, guys. So having a will in place is good, but when you own property and other things like that, having a revocable trust is even more necessary. So for you guys that have families and your homeowners uh, or maybe even business owners, you want to make sure that even if you have a will in place, that you also set in place a revocable trust. Now, this is law. And the only way your wishes can be upheld in the event that you or your spouse pass away is that you have this revocable trust in place. Now, it's easy to say, well, I only have one child, so it's going to go to my child, or uh, it's, I have several children and they know they, they'll work it out. It's easy to think these things, but this goes far beyond just what we think there are laws and things that are set in place that if you don't have these set in place and you die or something happens to you or your spouse then the courts are going to have to get involved and this can be a long drug out process before anything can be done with your estate so what you do at that point is that you leave your children or you leave your family in a situation to where uh, no decisions can be made until these things are decided and handled through the court. So keep that in mind, even though you may have a will in place. Just like me, uh, when my children were young, I had a will in place and I talked to uh, my family about it and what my wishes were for my children and things like that. Well, I have to go back and look at those things now. And now I learned that a revocable trust is necessary, especially when you have a, uh, assets involved. Okay, so if you're owning assets and you're trying to set a legacy for your uh, children, now is the time to talk to somebody about what is a revocable trust and a will and how to get those documents in place. Also, you want to have set in place a fin financial power of attorney and a durable power of attorney, uh, power of attorney for health. Okay, so there's two different things: a financial power of attorney for someone that take care of your financial uh, things that you have, your investments and things of that nature, and also a durable power of attorney for attorney for health. Okay, so those two different things. So there's several things I've given you tonight to um, prepare for the unexpected. And it's called the unexpected for a reason. We don't know if these things are going to occur. But tonight you've been educated on what those things are that you can help to prepare yourself in the event that the unexpected happens. Also, last night I shared with you my personal um, person that I use 
for investments and uh, that can answer your insurance questions and things of that nature. So I want to give that to you again. That is www.richthompsoninvestments.com. He's located out of the McKinney, uh, Texas area. And so those are just things that you can look into to help you in your preparation for the unexpected. I enjoyed talking with you guys tonight. I know that this is a little on the serious side of things, but I do believe that it is necessary. It's time to be educated, empowered, and encouraged through these trying times. Guys, y'all have a good night. God bless y'all.